What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be checking out two brand new webcams from Insta360 who just continue to dominate the webcam market. And this is the brand new Insta360 Link 2 webcam, giving us DSLR-like quality, but it's anything but. No capture cards, no bulky setup, a nice compact webcam giving incredible quality. Pop this off here. So in today's video, we're gonna go over both the brand new Link 2 models as well as the Link C, show you guys the video quality, the audio, run you through the software, all the important stuff. Cause if you want a webcam that looks as good as this does, you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention. Let's check it out. Okay, so first up, just checking out both models before we dive in with the Link 2 and Link C. They're similar, but also different. <laughs> they, they really each have their own intended use cases with needing to be tracked and in frame with the gimbal of the Link 2. Or if you're at a stationary setup while streaming and you don't need the gimbal, they have a more affordable Link C option. But I know lots of people love the tracking feature. So starting out with the Link 2, you'll see the half inch F 1.8 4K Sony sensor mounted on the two axis gimbal here with a noise canceling microphone in the middle and up top. And this new magnetic base has a few things, like the USB-C port to power it up. And this also has a touch sensor integrated for quick functions, but we'll demo that all coming up in just a minute. Now also inside the box, you get the magnetic bracket that folds in and out, which is great for, you know, attaching this to a tripod or a stand with that quarter inch thread underneath. Or if you just wanna use that lip and pop it on the screen of your laptop, very nice and simple, giving you some flexibility, quite literally here. Then also is your USB-C cable with a USB-A adapter to get this up and running because it's all plug and play, no HDMI or capture card needed. You also have the product guide and warranty info, some stickers, and the whiteboard recognition markers included as well for you. So all in all, pretty tiny and compact, but again, the gimbal for the Link 2 is gonna be the main selling point for this model. And if you don't need that, then the Link C is gonna be more your speed because it's that same sensor, same noise canceling microphone, just minus the two axis gimbal now. And this does actually have a built-in manual privacy cover on the side. But in terms of image quality, it's the same. The Link 2 is 199 and the Link C 149 which is really good. If you guys know anything about the webcam market, that's half the price, $150 less than the Elgato Facecam Pro. Or if you're just comparing the Link 2 model, that's $100 less than Elgato and $100 off the original Insta360 Link that came out two years ago. And again, you guys see the quality leader of the pack. But now we're gonna dive in, show you guys the software, the obvious video quality, cause that's what's mainly important, right? Let's check it out. Okay, so showing you guys here, we have the Insta360 Link 2, and we are inside their Link Controller software. We're gonna run you through uh, most of the main settings and the adjustments, but this is how everything looks raw, stock, out of the box, no further color corrections or color editing done inside the software. Everything is currently on the auto settings. Again, it's a 4K half inch F1.8 Sony sensor here, and it looks so good stock out of the box. So to note before we move on, what you've been hearing this whole time is the microphone. With the built-in microphone, it's noise canceling, and it sounds really good from what I've heard. There's a few different audio modes that I'll show you, but this is the, uh, the voice mode pretty much, focusing on my voice and doing a background elimination. We're on 4K30, there's lower quality modes, but why go low quality when you can have 4K 30 here. Uh, there's a portrait mode, which is really cool because once you flip the camera itself, gives you that full portrait orientation instead of just cropping in because the camera itself is actually vertical. So it's just adjusting the image vertically for you instead of having an image like this that would be you know artificially cropped in. You'd be losing out on so much, but here you get that same quality in the vertical orientation. Now, with this being the Link 2 with the gimbal, right now I currently have it off because I'm stationary. And there's a few different ways to turn this on. Uh, the first one would be inside the software on the bottom of the page. There is an AI tracking. You can just tap that. And now, just like that, whenever I move, it'll follow me around in frame. I'm gonna turn it off to show you the other way you can do that by tapping the touch sensor on the base of the camera. So a quick little tap, you see the light will blink. And then now, again, if I get up, I can walk all around, and with that two-axis gimbal, 
It's going to follow me. It's going to track me. It's going to keep me in frame despite moving beside it, behind it, all that stuff. So that's the second way. Another way you can do this is with a gesture. So if I just put my hand up, you will see it blinks. That lets me know that I'm being recognized. And yet again, I could just quickly move around. It'll keep me in focus, all that good stuff. But the gesture is definitely one of the easiest ways to do this. It's hands off, you're not touching the software, you're not touching your computer, you're not touching the actual webcam itself. So the gesture is a good one for sure. So that's the first thing here. And as we've seen with their previous Link Controller software, we do have the manual adjustments for the gimbal under the view adjustment setting. So this is how it is with the AI turned on. Let me just disable it for this demo. If I wanted to manually correct this without you know, touching the actual gimbal itself, you have the joystick in here to either drag over if I wanted to adjust where it is, or you can just simply tap the little, like the little buttons there for more fine adjustments. Another thing you can do is if you note the add presets under adjustments is have set locations of where you want the gimbal to quickly turn to at the press of a button. It's pretty much automatic. This is good if you have different scenes during your live stream or if you're in like a big conference room. And you can even control the gimbal remotely from your phone. It's web-based, so you just scan the QR code inside the software, and now you can completely adjust the gimbal and the camera all on your phone. Lots of ways to adjust this here. Then we do also have a desk view mode. So if you want to show what's going on on your desktop, you do have to flip the camera facing down a bit. You can do that either with the included stand they give you, or what's recommended would be like using a uh, separate desk stand, like a uh, little tripod adapter or something, because that will give you not only more height, but more flexibility to then bend it over. Just good for showing off whatever's on your desk, and there is a vertical correction mode inside the software, but cool to have, and it's right here for you. So real quick, we're gonna go over to the, the, uh, the effects tab with some of the color adjustments. Like I said, everything in here, as you can see, is manual. So it's gonna adjust the, the exposure, the autofocus for me, the color temperature. And real quick, speaking of which, one of the things that I've always loved about these Insta360 cameras is how good the autofocus is. Like just bringing up a little Geodude figure here, uh, it immediately recognizes that and gets super, super close. And you can see the nice like, natural bokeh of the roll off in the background. Like it keeps this in focus. Uh, the background gets nice and blurred. Just giving you guys more example. Uh, and that's where that uh, F1.8 sensor is gonna come into play by having that really nice soft background blur here. But again, if you wanna have a manual focus, you can do that. But color wise, everything here so far is stock and auto. You can also do color presets, which means if you want to sort of create your own color, you can save it and, you know, have like more contrast, more sharpness, more saturation, save that as a, as a color preset. And there's uh, different filters in background modes. So I'm not going to spend too much time on these because you mainly want to see how this looks stock out of the box, right? But you can add some artificial blur. Now, it's it's decent. I, I think just the natural blur on this itself is fine. But if you really want to crank it up, as you can see, uh, you can do that to just blur whatever you have going on in the background. There's also a bokeh mode, which pretty much does the same thing, as you can see. Uh, but it's a bit more natural looking. So I kind of like how that looks. But again, disabling it and turning the bokeh mode on, it's not all that different, but it does help give you more of that background blur. And there's things like, you know, background replacement with some of these, but we don't need to check out the fake backgrounds. So now we're gonna go down to the different filter modes. And there's six different built-in filters or, you know, like LUTs, if you will, which will just slightly change up the, the colors, adjust those, make things pop a bit more. There's a portrait, a daylight, two vintage settings, a neon, and a clear. And again, they're really not too bad because you can also, with those filters on, adjust the colors even more inside the effects tab and then save that as a, as a color preset if there's one that just, you know, makes it more flattering on camera or just makes the scenario pop a bit more. You can save that, you can configure it. But I really, really like how this all just looks natural, auto, no filter on, everything stock. 
Then for the more settings, this is where you can go in and configure those gestures. So like I showed you before with the tracking gesture, with the way you turn that on. There's also a whiteboard setting. I don't have a whiteboard to demo this, but if you wanted it to really focus on the whiteboard and have that as like your main uh, portrayal for like a business call or a conference call, there's a setting for that as well. And a zoom mode. So let me just show you guys real quick. I'm gonna walk back a little bit. When I put the L up, you can see it blink. That's letting me know the zoom is on. And I go up, it'll go in. When I stop, it'll zoom in and again, since it's 4K, it's still gonna look really good. I'm gonna put the L up again, it'll blink again, then if I wanna zoom out instead, I just bring the L downward and then it'll be stock zoomed out all the way. And then you have uh, two other things we're gonna touch on really quick. So first off is the mute in privacy mode. With this camera, if you wanna put it in privacy mode, there is a setting inside the software which will just put the camera pretty much to sleep. Uh, that will do it in the software. You can also just flip the uh, camera down and it will go to sleep as well. Or if you're idle for a few minutes, it goes to idle as it is. But there's also a setting to have it be muted in privacy mode, which I have on. So that's that for you. And then the audio mode. So right now we're on voice focus. Like I said, picking up my voice and doing a background elimination. We then have a voice suppression mode, which eliminates the voices of others. So if there's like a busy room with a lot of people talking, it would take out their voices and focus on yours. And then a music balance mode, which sort of balances your voice and the music in the background. So not necessarily an aggressive background elimination. This is gonna be good for streamers. So again, voice focus, focuses on your voice specifically, eliminates background noise. Then the actual uh, voice suppression focuses on your voice by eliminating background voices and a music balance, a good ambience balance pretty much of background and your voice. But this is all on the voice mode setting or the voice focus setting. Okay, so this has been the link to, gonna switch over real quick to the link C. Okay, so now we're over on the Link C webcam, with the main difference being there's no built-in gimbal. So all the stuff in the software with that gimbal control is gone. It's pretty more, uh, much more simplified here. But you still do have some gesture controls because you still do have the ones, like I said before, with if I want to zoom up and down, you'll see I still have those options with the gestures. But what's also cool is this side on the right side of the camera, this is a button. This lets you zoom in and you can, in the software, then adjust where you want to zoom in. So a bit of a different sort of uh, functionality here, but you can tap to zoom, one of the cool things. And like I said before, this does have that mil uh, the, uh, the built-in privacy cover. So if I flip it down, can't see anything. The screen's blacked out. Flip it back on, it'll auto adjust the quality to the lighting and you're good to go, but yes. The same camera here, the same built-in microphone, same quality, just without the added functionality of the gimbal for $50 less here. So wrapping it all up, as you guys heard and saw by the quality of the webcams, these are seriously impressive, especially at their price range in the webcam market. Like 150 for the Link C or even 200 for the Link 2 is more than fair. And I would take the quality of these over any other webcam in the current market right now, which as you see are starting from about 100 to $150 more than these are. The quality is so good that you really can, and I say this as somebody who's used multiple different cameras and options over the years for streaming, this could very easily replace a DSLR in your setup. And it's nowhere near as bulky, nowhere near as expensive, and it's gonna look incredible. My only critique that I would have for Insta360 would be on the Link C model. With it being able to be mounted vertically on the stand, I would love to just have the side of the cam also be magnetic so I can just snap it on the included base and be good to go. I think that'd be a little nifty and useful integration going forward. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up. If you wanna pick up one of these Insta360 Link webcams to immediately upgrade the quality of your streams, I'll have them listed for you guys in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on all socials at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.